You're listening to Afton Law, broadcasting from the beautiful South Birmingham. Except no substitute. Dear listeners, welcome to the aftermath of that dire display yesterday at home to Bristol City. After a pretty dire week, in all honesty, dear listeners, it's been a tough watch this week. Joining me to chew over the cud the morning after, the, the day before, are the two, uh, the, the, the jurors, the, the members of the jury for the show today is Mr. Harry Warren. How are you doing, H? Good morning, my dearly beloved listeners. <laughs> and also um, counsel for the for the prosecution, I think, today, it's, it's Mr. Neil Fissler. How are you doing, Neil? There's absolutely nothing good about this morning. <laughs> yeah, but let's be honest, yeah. Millwall was shit yesterday. England was shit yesterday. And the boxing wasn't much better. So a full day of, I thought, was going to be top quality sport. And it was total and utter rubbish. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree. I, I didn't have the energy to watch any more, so I didn't see any of the, the, the rugby. Or, I'm not a huge boxing fan, to be honest with your listeners. Um, I, I did a show yesterday. I ran out of energy in the end. So just a bit of housekeeping before we start today's edition. I'm going to use all of the other voicemails that people have really kindly sent me and do keep them coming because I, I do appreciate them but there was a lot to pack into yesterday's show and I just ran out of steam so I put put what I put out yesterday we're going to do this today and I'm going to do probably a separate um, edition of the other voicemails I, I want to include everything that everyone sent me I just want to say thank you for that but I'll do that separately to this this show I think because we we'll probably have quite a bit of content one way and the other and we'll be doing two hour episodes and I don't that, that's not what the podcast manuals tell you to do they say keep it to 20 minutes to 30 minutes but each one goes on longer than that oh uh, the guardian football weekly doing an hour and a half twice a week yeah well i mean I, I really appreciate people sending stuff in um and it's a nice way to do it you can send it on twitter now um on the direct messaging and if you've got my number just send me stuff i mean I, I, any anything anytime is always welcome listeners so um, I'll always try and include it on the next edition that we put out one way or the other. Um, but chaps, we, we're here not to praise Gary Rowett, but to to damn him, I think, after yesterday's dire show. I mean, let's begin with um, the, the unchanged side from Middlesbrough. Um, I kind of understood the, the thinking there because that was a really good performance. I mean, it seems like such a long time ago now, it was seven days is a huge period of time in football, but but Harry, um, it was it it was quite apparent at least halfway through the first half, and I, certainly by half time, I was saying we've got to change this. Um, you know, the the, the, the half time break, we're going to have to bring on the talent, as 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 I, as I love to call them, because we needed more a spark, and it wasn't happening yesterday. I don't understand why it took till 18 minutes to bring on the two players that could have changed proceedings yesterday. It, it's, I'm struggling with, with, with trying to get my head around it. What did you make of it yesterday, mate? Um, I thought it was Gary Rowett's Millwall tenure in a nutshell, really. Um, I thought the, the occasion passed Millwall by. Um, it was, let's, let's take the Tuesday night result with a massive pinch of salt because Gary Rowett throws the cap whatever energy drink cup and Mill will have a terrible energy drink or whatever it's called this year, um, a cup every year. So uh, f- more for you for going if you actually expected us to turn I up. I went. More for me. More for more you. For me. Um, that's not right. That's just our history. Um, and then we turn up yesterday and yesterday was going to be emotional and it was going to be, um, it should have been used as fuel and should have been used as a spark bit like the Blackburn game last season. um, And I looked at some of the VT used in that game. And what it shows me is the difference between the previous management and this management. And this management is cold and supposedly calculating and tactical. The last manager we had was passion and desire and emotion. And that's what carried his mill side, which meant that in particular one-off games, such as yesterday, Mill would have turned up. Everton in the Cup, mm. one-off playoff final games, big games against Leeds, Mill will turn up right, and play to more than what they are. With this manager, we are a better side. We have built a better standard of footballing side. But within that, we have become a cold, 
tactical, emotionally driven, uh, non-emotional side that play a system that is unable to feed off the den, struggles to play at the den, and our last 12 results, if you look at them across the two seasons, obviously first game this season, we struggle to get results at home now. And we, and the reason is because I think that that, that system that we played does not suit what we want to be at home. And most Millwall fans will turn around and say that they want us to be brilliant at the den. And if we go away and bloody the nose of people once in a blue moon, that's a great fucking result. If we want to move forward, we're going to have to learn a way of doing both. The problem is, is I personally do not believe that we will do that uh, early enough. You know, uh, last season, similar story. We played five at the back at the start of last season. It didn't work. By about October, we changed to a four at the back and we nearly got into the playoffs. This season, to do the same again is fucking Einstein's definition of madness. And I am worried that it is the same season maybe repeating itself because points doesn't matter whether you get them on the first day or the last day, they all fucking count. And we've just, you know, we threw one away in the last minute, last second of the game. But, you know, I've, I've rambled on for long enough, but I, I just, I don't, I don't see, I don't see what's to be gained by scratching over the same points. We could say, you could copy and paste points from this time last season to the performance yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Neil, I mean, I was reading the, the news at Den, one of their um, articles prior to the game, prior to a pre- uh, preview article called for a big response. Big response after that midweek squib, damn squib. We didn't get it yesterday, mate. And I'm also looking, um, before I pass over to you, Neil, I was just looking at Danny Baker, um, our nearest we got to a celebrity fan, um, calling Gary Rowett, um, it's an 8 out of 10 squad, is his wording. Is it, we've got an 8 out of 10 squad being led by a 3 out of 10 manager. Um, how do you see it? Because obviously, league-wise, we've performed at a higher level consistently over the, the Rowett years, perhaps, than we might have expected historically. But I, I've got a lot of sympathy for what Harry's saying about the um, the flatness of the den uh, and, and the, the lack of excitement in the ground yesterday. I think, well, that's get it. Yeah, let's be quite honest about it. He is making the same mistakes this season that he's made last season and the season before. You can't set up the way that he's setting up at home. You can't counter attack on the yeah, well, on the break. Mm. Yeah, at home with five at the back. Uh, I think there's a ceiling with Gary Rowett, and now it's up to to uh, to the new chairman to decide what they really want from the football club. Gary Rowett will will keep us in the championship by hook or by crook. It won't be pretty, but we will stay in the championship. There is a ceiling with Gary Rowett, and that ceiling is anywhere between mid-table and where we finished last season. Which was eighth, eighth we finished, didn't we? I mean, what we like- have to decide is... What do we want? Do we want to be the club that finishes in that uh, zone? The or do we, yeah, yeah. And do we want to be pushing for the playoffs? Because if we want to be pushing for the playoffs, we've got the wrong manager in charge. Uh, you know, the team reflects the personality of its manager. And yesterday, it reflected the personality of its manager. It was dour. It was poor. There was no imagination. There was no spark. We've got two of the most creative players and two of the most exciting players that I can remember as having, youngsters, Mm. for a very, very, very long time. And as Harry said and as you've said, he left them on the bench. That's Eze and Amaku. Yeah, two players that really get you off your seat. You give them the ball, things will happen because they've just got pace to burn, skill to burn. And we've got to find a way of harnessing that, but making ourselves difficult to beat. And it's just, it is thoroughly depressing. It's a poor week for the club. I think it's unfortunate that, obviously, the timing of everything. I think ideally, yesterday there was a lot of emotion around the ground, wasn't yeah, there? There was. Yeah. The 
made it a huge day for the chairman or for or well for the former chairman, JB, the greatest chairman this club's ever had. But he died how what did he die? Six, seven weeks ago? Yeah, July, early July. Fourth, fourth of July, oh, strangely. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be a little bit of a, it seems to have gone on. We're now in the middle of August, aren't we? Mm. And I think yesterday the occasion they built the occasion up, and I think it got too much for the players, too much for the management. Uh, they should have fed off it, and I don't. And one of the things I don't think that helped was that ear piercing bloody music. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, towards kick off when the yeah when the. Yeah, when the whole ground, apart from the away end, obviously, is singing John Berylson, yeah. some idiot decided to play London Call in an ear piercing bloody volume instead of feeding off that emotion. Liverpool feed off that emotion with You Never Walk Alone just before kickoff. The fans sing it, it doesn't come through the, the, PA. Bloody, yeah, the PA system, and it just it, it was just an all-round poor game, I think, yesterday. And, and and we really have to decide what we want. Do we want to push on or do we just want to stick with what we've got? I mean, for me, what struck me, and I don't know what you boys think on this point, because I, I, I make you right, Neil, about the raw talent of... Roman Essa is still very young, but he's got the ingredients. Let's, let's put it this way. He's got the ingredients to be one of the best players that we've seen in a Millwall shirt. He's got to achieve yet. He's got to do it. But you you know when you see the ingredients of a player and the way he goes past seasoned championship defenders like a knife through butter. He's got the ability to take the ball and run with it. Why is he sitting on the bench when he is such a game changer? Now, I, I, I don't know the, the, the football kind of um, industries... Uh, uh, you know the the the, the ways that they approach these things, but at half time at least it was crying out to have been changed, and you've got a game changer sitting on the bench. I don't get that. I'd also include um, Ida Mo Marku, who looks like another um, very very strong talent. But I also want to include boys um, the likes of Casper De Noor. and and you know he's, he's he looks a little bit um, flat at the moment. Zian Fleming and and even Joe Bryan. These all new signings, they all look really good players. You know, they look like creatives. They 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 want to be around good players. But then you've got a really sharp contrast. Um, and, I, you know, I, I like the uh, Jules Saville uh, coming in. I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with Jules Saville, Billy, Billy Mitch and so on. But the defence looks like we've signed or we, we, we have a League One defence playing with a good European style midfield and forward line. No, Kevin Nisbet looks a real, um, a real, a, a real prospect up front in, in that in that level. But we have a sharp contrast between the back line and the forward line. How do you see that, Harry? I mean, I, I, I was really struck by it yesterday, well, mate. It's no, it's no different than what we had before. The problem is, is you've got three centre backs that are kick it, edit, win it centre backs. That's fine as long as you've got a ball playing centre back to take the ball off them. Yeah, but they're donkeys. <laughs> I, I, I think I think Jake Cooper's a little bit better than a donkey. I'll be honest. I think he's a little bit better than a donkey. They're not thoroughbreds. They're donkeys. They're, they're, they're not thoroughbreds. No, I mean I, I I don't know about donkey. That's that's hard. that's a harsh call. But I, I would say that they are. A... When was the last time Murray Wallace had a good game? What he? I'm not talking about Murray Wallace. Where Murray Wallace is a separate conversation Sean for a separate. Didn't day. actually look like a liability. Murray, Murray, Sean Hutchinson and, and Jake to some level. I think less so with Jake. I don't know about the donkey part, but I think father time is is taking its toll. I mean, Murray has overperformed in his career. I mean, he came from Scunthorpe. I, I don't think he had much of a uh, track record prior to that, but he's he's really done well with Millwall. He's one of these players that found his, his natural theatre. I mean, they, pre-match, they showed uh, the interviews and there was uh, Adam Dunn, another player of a similar ilk, you know, a player that found his theatre at the den. Um, I, I just think that time and um, the fact that I, I would call him journeyman. Journeyman is a better description. Yeah, journeyman's probably a little bit of a better phrase than donkeys, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> journeyman. I, but I just think 
we're, we're getting found out, Neil, at this level. We've, we've got players that want to pass the ball and move. And, and you know, Harry's right. The number of times that uh, Jake and, and Sean Hutchinson and Murray launched the ball long because they're still looking for Steve Morrison up front with Lee Gregory alongside him in their mob. They're looking for width. They're looking for a 45 diag, which gives you two wingers because that's what they've done their entire career. And there's nothing else on. And they now have two players coming towards them. And they're not comfortable on the ball to go past that initial press. That is why last season, that Dan... Um, not Dan... Uh, Charlie Creswell. Yeah. Charlie yeah. Creswell could do that the year before. Dan Ballard did he that. Did very well, right? yeah. So have we, have we not noticed that we did need a centre-half? It was quite important to sign. If you're going to play five at the back, you have to sign a centre-back. Can we also talk about Danny McNamara not having any fucking competition other than Ryan Leonard, who we all know will be injured 75% of the season. But again, we have eight fucking centre midfielders at the club. But but it's fine because Gary knows what he's doing in the transfer market. The problem is, is that it takes time to build a squad. But I think he's had enough time. He's had enough transfer windows to implement his He's, he's, he's had enough transfer windows to get rid of this Deadwood from his system. Admittedly, the chairman's died. Admittedly, that would have made this transfer window difficult. But surely, surely you're not telling me that our entire fucking centre-back policy was based around Leeds staying up or getting relegated on the last day of the season last year. Because that's what it appears like to me. And, and you know, you can, look at, you can look at the club in general at the moment. The club is fucking rudderless. The only good thing they've done this summer is sort out HMP Aries. You still can't buy a fucking shirt in the club <laughs> shop. You still got fucking yesterday trying to get into the den. Whose idea was this? Madly to put fucking metal fucking barricades at the fucking east lower end to fucking get in the ground. We've queued up behind people for years. Why have you overcomplicated this? It's like Gary Rowett has taken over control of the getting into the ground now. It's overcomplicated and fucking pointless. Just go fucking in that way it is it's very frustrating for people that have come for year in year out and put up with this shit and i'll go back to like fucking in my time we've been fucking shitting league one right and there's people who've been going longer than fucking me and we've been shitting fucking the old division two or fucking <laughs> division four whatever way you want to put it but we're not there anymore we don't have the line at the door we don't have fucking administration to fight we're supposed to be a side that's looking that way not fucking that way and we seem so we're so worried about the veneer of the club. You know, we've put new signs up down the West Upper I saw yesterday, but we haven't cleared Nick's bird shit. And there's bird shit in that. That was clear. That was cleared in oh, fairness. Clear. Although I did notice that that was cleaned. Uh, I did notice the man in block 11 who I follow on, on Twitter. Bird shit I think he had, he had a pile of bird shit I, there. I mean, this is basic stuff. I don't want to bang on about but, bird but shit my again. Point, but, but my point is, it is the club. That is the club, right? In, in so we have a lot of people at the club that mean well, right? But Murray Wallace probably means well, but he shouldn't be playing, right? That's, 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 it's a wider Millwall trait of looking after people that really need to be given the fucking an adult conversation, and and it's just a wider fucking problem. Yeah, funnily enough, I was thinking this point this morning, and that's without speaking to. Ari and Nick about it. We have got people that are quite happy to coast through, aren't we? Uh, mm. Yeah, we've got this ambition, but we've still got this small wall mentality. There have been murders online about, uh, yeah, well, about the club shop. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and the company that we've got in to sort out the mess that was left behind. When will we learn that outsourcing is not the fucking answer to our problems? That I that I agree with Neil because um, fanatics that's in that knows what they're doing. That's yeah, well that's and that's we're veering off the football bit. I want to I, I, let's come back to fanatics because I think there's a slight. I mean, I'm just looking at Phil Clark as dug out our last twelve home results because I think that everything. Begins on the pitch with one out of fifteen. Or something. Yeah, and it's a, it's a poor. I mean, for for Millwall, which is and Neil and I know this. I mean, a number of seasons where we've we've like won really strongly at home and maybe got one away win all season. It, it, was plenty... it tends to be like a top six side at home and a fucking bottom six side away. That's yeah. Honest, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's the way we want it, but we best best that you get your home form right and then try and improve your way. Well, anyway, Phil's dug out. There's what six losses. 
in the last 12 home games and a couple of draws. Um, it's, it's a poor sequence for Millwall. And this comes back to what we started out talking about, which is the Gary Rowett um, factor. Um, there's obviously a huge debate now online, Spark, no, not least by uh, Danny Baker with his half a million uh, followers, um, talking about um, a, a three out of ten manager. Um, I, I do wonder, Neil, whether there is a cap, as I, I think that's the, the way that you put it, uh, there's a kind of cap on his performance. Um, early early in the season to be, but then we've seen other seasons that followed similar, similar patterns, and we've had a week where... We haven't scored a goal and we've conceded five goals to two, I mean, a mediocre sides, I suppose, in both cases, really. I don't know if Bristol would expect to be challenging at the top end of the season, of the, of the campaign, but it's been a poor, poor week. Um, at what point does do the rumbles become thunder? I mean, I, I think he needs to find some home form fairly sharpish, a, in my I opinion. I think there's a hangover from last season as well, which there always is going to be. Um, I, I mean... But is that clarity in your judgment a little bit? Do you forgive them for last day of the season last year? Or was that just another performance like that? Um, for me, I, I make no bones about it. I've wanted him gone for ages. So it's, it's, it's pointless asking me. My mind's made up. I know what I want Millwall to be. And it ain't Gary Rowett's Millwall. You know, if we get promoted under Gary Rowett, brilliant. Mm. But he still wouldn't... It still wouldn't be my type of my type of football because I don't think what he wants to achieve is achievable within our budget and our and our thing. That's not me thinking small wall or anything else. That's me being a realism uh, like a realistic person within football. You know, we can only sign one player we need a year in this transfer window, and you need to sign eleven. So under that idea, we'd have to sign we'd have to do eleven fucking years of Gary Rowett, and you're not going to get that anymore in football. So it, it's. For me, it's what do you want Millwall to be? Then there's the problem that Millwall will always get the appointment wrong. Always. Um, I mean, it's very rare that we get an appointment <laughs> right of a new manager, ever. Um, you think that he steadied the ship. He steadied the ship and he's turned us into... Well, they wanted Ainsworth. Uh, you know, they, they, it was so, uh, Ainsworth was favourite. And look what happened at fucking QPR. You know, it's a very, very worrying fucking thing. Yeah, well, he has... He really has steadied the ship, and we are now an established championship side. Okay. Yeah, we are, and 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 we we I think we can ex- unless there's disaster. I mean, you know, I do wonder what the squad think of the current tactics. I, I do. It, it must be apparent to the, well, the new players. Or Diamond, look yeah, at to be quite honest. Yeah, you know, you've signed a guy from Scotland, Nisbet, who showed in pre-season that if you give him the ball. And the service, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you give him the service. The service, it's the same old... How how often have we done a podcast over the last... How, you know, how long have I been doing podcasts with you? A few years. It seems like a long time, Neil. <laughs> it's a fucking long time. You, 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 you look on it from my end. You have having a you have numbers every time I come on here, yeah? Uh, but... <laughs> it was service and give yeah, it was like it when I was at the other place during lockdown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> service to our players that we provide is fucking dog shit. Oh, absolutely. And, and these are skillful players. There was a moment, I don't know if you would have seen it, you're, you're on the other side, Harry, but um, I don't, you, you might have seen it on the TV now. This bit produced a moment of skill. I mean, it came to nothing because the ball got away. I think he was trying to feed what more, I believe. It was in the first half. But he produced a moment of skill on the ball that was like an illumination. It's like one of these medieval Bibles where they've, they've produced this stunning little the, moment. I know the part. And you think, well, it can do that. So why are we not working what to more made, what explore more, that? You know, what more um, made a little third man run and instead of walking onto it, opening his body up and curling it, in, he tried to take another touch. And then you mm. realise that's why Duncan Watmore, with all his pace and direct running, is playing for Millwall when not anyone better. Um, but that's the look, those are rare moments. You look at you, the problem for me is that our plan A is to play this possession based football, knock it around, create runners from the midfield, overload their defense, and, and score goals. That worked at Middlesbrough without us being particularly clinical. We had a moment of magic from the two boys, as you call them, the talent, um, mm-hmm. and, and we took a chance. We then got thumped by Reading, and then yesterday, um, 
we we didn't really create anything. Bristol didn't, well, didn't really create anything. Did you it, Harry? I mean, I haven't seen the highlights, no. real, but apparently it includes one shot from from Jules Seven. Might be the free kick, I'm guessing, in the late yeah. in the game. Um, but apart from that, there was literally nothing. I was I had a load of Americans um, on tour doing the doing soccer in 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 the in the UK, and I I said to the young lady next to me, I, said, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. But she said, "Well, I've not really been watching it." <laughs> I don't blame you. She's looking at her phone. She was really on the phone and what she was watching on the pitch. Achtung, Mailball. I'll be honest. I don't usually go and use the Millwall's kiosk facilities, but at <laughs> half time it was that fucking boring. I went and bought myself a pint of Spitfire just to fucking get through it. It was. Um, <laughs> it was. It took me twenty minutes to get served. No, no doubt as well because you know, fantastic Millwall catering team as usual. Um, but it's it's look, fucking let's let's take the oh, jokey piss taking Millwall bollocks out of it. It's not very good, is it? Right? That's the that's no, the plain no, that's the fucking no, plain no. that's the plain um that's the plain truth in the light of day is that we've got no plan B. Plan B would be to have wingers. We signed plan B in January last season, plan B standing for Oliver Burke. Um and yeah, but he was Plan D, wasn't he? I think Plan, I think Plan, I think Plan A, B, C, and D are to go over the top and run towards the German trenches um, whilst being <laughs> massacred. I think that's basically where we are. Um, but look, if we play like that at home all the time this season, it will be a long fucking season. Um, and and what annoys me is this this idea, this this. What's the right word? This idea of not using the den to its potential is a fucking travesty. And it is. Mm. It's a travesty not to... It's another full den. How many times last two seasons have we filled the den now? And you want them to perform. You want them to make these people who maybe haven't come in years, maybe haven't come since we were, you know, under uh, under McGee and pushing fucking finishing in the playoffs and whatever. Maybe haven't come for 20 years. Right, and they go, oh, fuck it, they're playing well again. I'll, I want, I'll spend me money, I'll go and watch them. Fuck it, I won't sit in the pub. And you get those people to come back and you serve up shit like that. That That is literally it. And it, it's commercially damaging and it's emotionally damaging for all of us who give a shit. And it, it's just not, it's not, you know, it's not feasible to do this for a long period of time. But he was Teflon during COVID, I suppose. You know, we all went through, what was it, fucking 20 games without a win? A half a yeah, season. and some some pretty poor performances and, at times. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I think I think a lot of people, you know, have forgotten how bad that was. And I think if it had been any other season other than a COVID season, he wouldn't be our manager now. That's me being honest because I don't think you can I don't think you can do that in modern football without someone pushing a panic button for a change. So, look, there are managers out of work. There will always be managers out of work. Mill will always pick nine times out of ten pick the wrong one. So be careful what you wish for. That's me fucking sitting on the fence as much as you're going to get, but I don't like Gary Rowett, so I can't have my cake and eat it. No, I mean, I'm just looking at this, a post here by Merv, Merv Payne, and he makes a good point, actually, because he's talking about Gary Rowett's um, post-match interview, which you can't see. I think they stick a clip on, on it's Twitter. It's like a 40-second so clip of going, don't yeah. blame me, don't blame I, me. I'd I, be happy to win at home and lose away, basically. That's that's the a post-match interview, I would need to phone the Samaritans. <laughs> I, I, I'm away I next week. We're, we're taking we're taking the family away next week, so I'm, I've paid a fiver to tune into Mill TV because you get the post match extended highlights, and there's actually a full run of the game if it's worth watching. But anyway, one of the, one of the benefits in inverted commas is you get to be able to listen to the five minute version of Gary Rowett's post match <laughs> interview. <laughs> and Mer, Mer, Mervis pick, picked up on a, a point which struck me actually. I watched it last night when I ran out of steam make it, doing the the show. Um, he, he made the point that um, if we'd have got beat 1-0 to a late goal at Borough, but then won yesterday, everyone would have been happy, um, which is a strange point to make because really what you want is momentum to have gone to Borough, picked up the three points and then picked up the three points at the den. But Merv makes the point the players don't seem to feed, be able to feed off the atmosphere and they seem blasé, as he puts it. Um, three defeats from the last three at the den, nine conceded. You have to question if we're talking about the end of season match there, of course, Blackburn v Blackburn. You have to question if the players are comfortable with the manager's tactics. I wonder whether that's the truth of it because they can't, they must be able to see, they're, they're up close and personal with it. And 
you know, if we're not happy watching it, they can't be happy playing it. Yeah, but they're as bored as we are, aren't they? Let's be honest. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's not for too much. But he, yeah, but he probably opens his match in the pre-match uh, uh, meeting and, yeah, but they're asleep within five minutes, aren't they? I know certainly I am whenever I listen to that clip of the interview. It's <laughs> dour. It's just, it, it, it's just the whole, the whole thing is absolutely dour. There's no other word for it. I'm sorry. He had a slightly exasperated tone to him. I mean, I don't know if exasperation would have been your take out of the game yesterday, H, but um, Rowett had a slightly, um, he almost, he didn't quite say he couldn't, he can't understand it, but he, you get a kind of reading between the lines or listening between the lines, so to speak, but he, he doesn't quite know what he's not, what's not go, going right at the moment. Um, but I do, I do want. I just love this post by George MFC One. If you're listening, George, he's got Hutchinson to Cooper to Wallace to Brian back to Wallace, hoof it up the line and lose the ball. Repeat. That's our style of play. I think that sums it up quite nicely. <laughs> yesterday, well done, yeah, George. I think, I think um, if you look back to Middlesbrough, you struggle to name a player that played badly, um, yeah. and yesterday you'd struggle to say someone that played well. Um, so. You know, and that would have been the same for Reading. I didn't even watch it. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't watch the highlights, and I, I wasn't. You missed nothing there, mate. I, I can tell you that much. You exactly. So, there. so you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take the piss and and put myself through that. But look, the the thing that strikes me is that when players, you know, when players at Millwall tend to get move that squad or whatever they tend to normally be quite happy to be in around the squad or whatever there seems to be an open door of okay you're being taken out but you move back into the squad or you you play it's interesting that george long has been bombed there there Mm. seems to be a very a bomb-like culture growing um and i don't know realistically what's going on i don't know you're you're saying do the players look bored i think you know, looking at the attitudes. I mean, a lot of people are reading into Fleming looking like he don't want to be there or whatever. But the greatest deal of respect, I can understand where he's coming from. I, 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 I get why Fleming would be pissed, but then also it's up to it's up to Gary Rowick to either pick him or not pick him. He's also playing out of position, which is the most stupid fucking thing to do, is to play the best player, arguably, um, well, definitely goal return-wise, out of position. Um and just there's loads of little things like that. And it's all adding up into a big ball that's going to keep on spinning and keep on turning. And it builds, it's a momentum of unhappiness. And it's mm. kind of nothing's really going right. And everyone has a sell-by date. Everyone does, of course, in terms of, of, of football, when it goes in one ear and out the other. And at the moment, I feel like we're in a marriage that sort of lasted Lo- five loveless, years. Loveless, loveless yes, marriage. Yes, we are in sort of what's We're, we're here together. for the kids. We're, we're staying together for the yeah, kids. We're in a seven-year itch. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Yeah, well, that's what it, Yeah, no, I think it's a good way. <laughs> it's one of those passionless, sexless marriages. Like, yeah, the, yeah, but you find a woman on. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a, act on relationships. That's gonna be our next uh, next sideline sideline show. Um, just want to close us on yesterday, boys. Before we go back to fanatics and 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 uh, one or two other bits that people have, have mentioned. Um, the Danny McNamara uh, question, um, he's get, he gets slaughtered. Oh, he, he gets does. slaughtered at the moment. Um, I believe unfairly so. Um, he's Jay, a Jay, wing-back. He isn't a wing-back. He's a bloody right-back, and he's being expected to, to perform. In attacking a back <laughs> uh, JP, JP Millwall 2 does the, the computer voice, I think. Does it brilliantly. I don't know what he's going to do with yesterday's show. But anyway, uh, but he makes the point. Danny Mack is a weird one because he's a strong 1v1 defender, which I think he is. I think he's a good defender. Yeah. But the ball at his feet, as JP puts it here, he's genuinely conference north stand. I think that might be a bit harsh. But anyway, we, I, I know what you mean. He's not as good with the ball going forwards. But JP makes the point here, Harry. The worrying thing with Dan is that he's, there's been zero improvement in the last two years. Um, he wants him to do well, don't we all? But um, if he wasn't Millwall, he would have been hounded out years ago. Um, and Tony L in reply makes a, a point that his confidence is shot to pieces, which it I is. can believe. I think he plays with the weight of his Millwall support on his shoulders, which I think we probably all would do if we were in the shirt. He, uh, Tony says he thinks he'd benefit as a player with a move away or a loan away, perhaps, I suppose. But um, 
I don't know. It's difficult. I mean, we've we've seen other players in the past carry their Millwall credentials. I mean, there's been a, a history of them, some better than others. But all of them, I mean, I'm thinking of John Marquis, I'm thinking of Sid Nelson, I'm thinking of um, Billy, even to some level. Yeah, I, I, I just... It's a weight, think, isn't uh, it? I think for Danny, Danny always looked better with Jeb Wallace in front of him. Always. Yeah, yeah. And Jeb, because it's like Danny doesn't actually understand where he's supposed to be or when he's allowed to go beyond the winger. or I think like, And now you're expecting him to do all that on his own with no real information. There's a lot... I've noticed yesterday because the den was flat for a large portion. There's no fucking Millwall voice. There's no, no Millwall leader. There's no character. The side has no character. What is the character of this Millwall side? There isn't. It's trying to be two things at once. It's trying to. It's trying to. It's trying to be a continental style side, and we've got some of the players to do that. We've got a good few players that can do that, but we've still got this baseline of old school Neil Harris style Millwall. The, there's only, know, all the, thing, all there's the things only, we've discussed in this show. I don't want to go over it again, but the two three, don't combine. There's there's four players. There's four players left, really, from, from that era, and plus mm. Bradshaw on the bench and maybe a few others. But those players, those players are the ones that are now exposed by this system. But they're the players that, if we got into a relegation fight, it would be the fucking one standing now. Yeah, yeah, do you, yeah do you get, I, do you get I what agree. I mean? I agree. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and what makes me... what what boils my piss a little bit is that there's this this thing that we've got to have a boo boy and it's got to be fucking Danny Mac. It doesn't have to be Danny Mac. The, the, the point is, is that Danny Mac shouldn't be playing. But who picks Danny Mac every week? Who didn't sign a right back all summer? Who didn't sign a right wing back? It's that cunt over there. The same bloke that fucking decided Tyler Bury was a better fucking choice than Roman Essa last game last season when we needed a fucking goal, when we needed something to happen. It's that man. You all keep forgetting, this man makes the decisions. He's got immense credit in the bank for what he's done over the last three seasons. You can, you can still want him to be a manager and you can still criticise him. And it doesn't say, the players seem to be copying a lot of shit for a formation that doesn't work and a fucking manager that doesn't love us, mm. we don't love, and, uh, and there's, it's starting to become a problem. It is starting to become a problem because the own form suddenly dipped. We go away in hope rather than expectation. I expect to come to the den and I expect Millwall to put in the effort and fucking and a bit of art and a bit of arsehole for, to, to reward me for my fucking support and my loyalty, right? That's what I expect. And I think I, 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 I should be able to expect that from Millwall at home. I go away from home in expectation of Millwall trying to sit there and hit on the counter attack. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, and if we bloody someone's nose and win one nil, great. If we get a nil nil draw, fantastic, right? But I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand this idea, this this God-given fucking right. The new breed of Millwall fans seem to sit there to be entertained. I could not care if we play the most dour fucking shit football as long as we fucking win. The problem is, is we've stopped fucking winning at home and now it's fucking just shit football. And that is he's, a big problem. He's got to find an answer soon, Neil. Um, I, I, th I think the rumbles, rumbles are getting louder at the moment, mate. Uh, and probably quite rightly so. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, I go back to the point I first made, that we have to decide what we want. If we want to be middle of the table, then we leave him. But if we decide that we want to push on, then we need to look at, is he the best man for the job? And I don't believe he is. If we're grinding out these dour performances and we're getting results at home. Yeah, fair play. It's a results driven industry, isn't it? You yeah, we can't all play like Man City week in, week out, can you? You can't have this free flow in a you play to what your resources are. We're not playing we're not using our resources properly. As H said, playing Fleming out of position is criminal. Mm. Best player we've had uh, yeah but at the club since Tim Cahill. Yeah. Probably even better than KL. Yeah? And it's, gonna... it's, uh, it's just, you just can't fathom out what he actually wants to achieve. Achtung, Mailball. It's going to be an early test for the new chairman. He was doing the rounds yesterday, James Berylson. Big day for the Berylson family. Um, I, I think the club did the, the tribute side really very well, as we always seem to. We seem to have a talent for some things and a, 
a, an incompetence in many other areas. Um, so it's a really odd combination, very Millwall combination. But the, the you know, the, the, I was at the uh, the fan zone early on yesterday, and a lot of people there, big crowd. And there's a real sense of togetherness, I think, with the Berylson family. I'm hoping that um, they felt that, if not from the football, but certainly from the pre-match um, ceremonials that, that, that took place, which were done very well, as I say. But this is a big test for the new chairman. And, you know, I, I wonder whether, you know, his kind of pre- um, or post-passing statements uh, seem to be... He wants to continue the legacy of, of his dad, and I'm hoping that yesterday reinforced that with the Berylson family, because we need them. Blimey! Um, and I'm hoping that that will will continue. But it's a, it's a it's a test of. I mean, his dad was always known as a loyal man, but at the same time, all the things that you've said, Neil, about what kind of club we want to be, have to weigh on James Berylson's mind because what kind? What does he want Millwall for? It's, it's his now. Does he want to aim up or does he want to stand still? I, I'm hoping he wants to aim up. That's 100% what I was thinking earlier on. What I want to hear from James Berylson now is not a buzzworded interview where he's given a, a sheet of buzzwords to come out with yeah, by, uh, yeah, by the propaganda department. Yeah, keep the plebs happy. He's a load of buzzwords. I want to know from James Berylson what his vision for Millwall is and where he wants to take Millwall. And I want it in his words, not in Steve Kavanagh's, Billy Taylor's or anybody else's words that feed him those words. I want to know what the Berylson family's plans are for Millwall Football Club. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I don't want to seem insensitive. Because no, but it's, it's business, Neil. It's business. Uh, you know, this, this is... this is Yeah, exactly. Think, yeah, but this is a multi-million pound business. Yeah. And I think if any other business, if the owner dies, then you get clarity. Now, it's up to the Berylsons and Jimmy or James, whatever he goes by, Mm. needs to provide us with some clarity. He needs to set out his vision for the football club because his vision might not be his father's vision. No, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Harry, I mean, I, I, I watched the pre... The, I didn't really get a good sight of the video yesterday. I, the way I was sat was, it was too tightly packed to see the whole thing. But it was a really nicely done video. But one thing really leapt out at me with John Berylson... Um, he was clearly a man of substance and leadership from various. I think he'd been in the American army. He, he'd, um, he'd made it in business. He's a man who had presence and um, standing, charisma. Yeah. charisma. Yeah. Now that's a very difficult thing, you know. With there is there is none of us alive that doesn't um, know the relationship of, of, of son to father, and so to step into those shoes. And be a leader in the same way. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's a situation no. building at Millwall where it's going to be called upon uh, one way or the other. I mean, uh, James is, uh, I'll call him James because I've never been introduced to him. So unless he says to me, Nick, call me Jimmy, I feel like I should be calling him James. Um, unless he unless he says, um, you know, I, I, I back Gary Rowett to be the man to do this or then he's got he's got a judgment to make i think at some point especially if form don't improve yeah not I easy mean, not easy no i mean i'd argue that if he doesn't if you're if, you know if my dad was chairman of millwall and my dad tragically passed away on st george's day and uh, which mm. in theory the fourth of july is for them um yeah. And, and it was his vision to see Millwall Football Club in, in the Premier League. That would be what I'd strive to achieve. What happens at that point is what I'd be worried about, if I'm being totally honest with you. Once the once the mission has been completed, shall we say, is it then, would that be the moment for the Berylsons to go, well, we've done what Dad wanted, we're off. Yeah, it's um, time to go, right? Yeah. 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 Um, which would worry me. But, but in terms of, surely... You'd hope, and I, I, you know, I generally believe that is what they want to achieve. Now, that's up to them. They, I, I get the feeling that they've never really been 
and this is probably, I don't know, is it xenophobia to think Americans don't understand football? I, I, no. I don't know. Um, but it, the, one, the ones around me yesterday understood they were watching crap. They they understood enough. Well, to I mean, I mean that's not particularly hard. I mean, I'd like to know like an under seven would understand that they were watching shit. Um, but in a wider sense, you know, the the, the nuances of of you sack managers and you, you know, if a Premier League manager became available in terms of someone with proven, um, proven promotion prospects and, and, and regular promotions and underdog teams getting them to be promoted came available when you were in an iron about Gary Rowett, that's when you need someone with experience. Now, yeah. over the 11 years, John Perlson had gained experience and uh, had been taken for a ride a couple of times, you know, been taken for a ride by a, a charlatan called Holloway and we had other and low mess and we learned from those occasions and we got it right with the last two appointments that he made. Um, but the, the, the problem is we've got to do that all over again. We've got to have a chairman yeah. that's got to learn all that kind of stuff again, unfortunately. So... I think the timing of everything this season is just going to be a little bit shit. I, 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 it's understandable. It's understandable that it's going to be a little bit shit. But I think as long as we stay up, whatever happens this season, that's the main thing. Whether we've still got Gary Rowett or not it is, is irregardless with that. I'd like us to be pushing at the top end of the table, but I, I just can't see it. I think it's going to take too long to sort the rat. Like, even if it lasts for October, it's too long for a side like us to, to, to claw points back unless we go on some mad, you know, 2000, the first year we were in the champ under Aris kind of run. Um, and even then we fell short. So I, I just, I worry that we're flat. A mill being flat ain't good. We, we rely on, we rely on uh, on life or death situations, don't we? We rely on, you know, fucking, oh, they're going to CPO and steal the club. Fuck it. Let's all band together <laughs> and sort it out. Or we're going to get relegated. Fuck it. We need to do this. Or we'll have a sort out in the car park. Or we're on a mad run towards promotion. This brings the best out of us. Whereas fucking 13th sort of just brings beige, bland, Cholton, fucking train spotting <laughs> kind of nuance out. It, it, it's just how we are, really. Just to um, just to close us this morning, chaps. I'm just looking at wall, wall art. It's got a picture of two coppers standing outside the uh, the, the turnstile by the by the club shop, and he's captioned it. Um, they're debating they're they're debating whether the north stand should be open again. Split. <laughs> <laughs> for future, there, yes, for future, future fixtures. Uh, the the ter- two van loads of territorial support group what went past me at speed as I walked down Ilderton Road. Um, and I think the blocking. answer, I think the answer to the question for the coppers in this photograph is probably not. I think that I, I think that might have been an experiment. Um, I mean, it was Bristol City, Neil? So you know, um, well, what they should do then is they should put the day trippers in there. You could probably do it against Forest Green Rovers or um, Milton Keynes Dons, but I'm not sure Bristol was the game to try and choose. If you want to, if you want to make that open and you want to put fans in there, make it. That's where you put the American Day Trippers. Let's be honest. Yeah, it, like a like a neutral zone, like the Fulham used to have, didn't they? I yeah, mean, they have still got. Yeah, make that a neutral zone. You put the Day Trippers in there instead of inflicting. That you you on them? Let's put them in the yeah. But that's they had a, a tarpaulin separating. I mean, I, I didn't really get a great view of it other than when I was walking out, and I wasn't yeah, really looking too. It's good fun. Uh, <laughs> I had a fantastic. Fun. I had great view. Yeah, well, we like a bit of dog down there. Well, we like a bit of aggro. Let's be honest. Yeah, my personal favourite was walking out Dan Silwood and seeing the police pull across. A dead end road, bearing in mind it is a dead end at the end of Silwood, and they yeah, put yeah, a yeah. fucking van across the end as if they were blocking. What were you blocking? Like, a strategic, what, like, a strategic choke point. Yeah, yeah, strategic fucking. And everyone just walked onto the pavement, and walked past three coppers who were standing away. What are you watching me for? Just fucking walk, going home. I, as I, I walked along um, uh, the road to Surrey Keys by Southwark Park, there was 
uh, clumps of about three or four SPG types uh, every every ten yards along that road. I, I suppose that's where it kicked off against Everton down there. So I've maybe seen... I was thinking it might be a likely spot. I don't know. Well, the amount of fucking coppers used by um, the amount of resources used by fucking <laughs> football yesterday was astronomical. Because I went and got a coffee yesterday morning by a uh, Dagdam East Station, and fucking yeah. South End were playing Dagdam and Redbridge yesterday. Yes, they were. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, there was yeah. nine fucking territorial support group <laughs> meat wagons full, and this is about nine o'clock. And this is for a fucking conference, fucking North League, or something. That's the, 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 the C to C railway derby, oh, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like this, and it was like, what the fuck is this? Like, Nietzsche, you know, when you're like going, like, really? Like, really? Just going back to the North Stand, I mean, there was tarpaulin, so that's, there's an invitation to try and breach the uh, the, 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 the the tarpaulin, which isn't exactly the Berlin what, Wall what, what tarpaulin, barrier. But... What's tarpaulin to a fucking stone island clad? <laughs> it's a challenge. Person, a person, it's, person, it's not yeah, a barrier. It's like a sexual come on. <laughs> it's like a pheromonial, a pheromonial <laughs> instinct is to approach the tarpaulin. But you could do, you could do what we did yesterday but you need a physical barrier i think i mean i'm, I'm trying to be um realistic here listeners type ballings are not, are not going to work at mill this is not um the the north london derby where you can type ball in arsenal from yeah. spurs this is I'm, this is Millwall. it's it's, it's going to be seen as a, it, it's I, I, a simple it is a very simple question there right you obviously want to improve attendances. We've started to improve attendances yeah long-term yeah. planning is you fill one of the corners in and you put them in the corner and you still leave the away end because really, I suppose it would just want an investment level that we haven't haven't been. Um, fuck fuck up me, to there's doing. enough. Fuck me, there's enough bricks laying about fucking in development centres around Dan Silwood. We could fucking nick. It's just it was all sitting there yesterday. If anyone wants any bricks, they're fucking laying outside <laughs> on pallets in the middle of the road. You've moved them for health and safety purposes. Yeah, no, you make a point. Yeah, but I think what you do is you should put the Americans in there. You put the tourists in there. There's the neutrals. Uh, uh, but yeah. the point is they they won't get. We don't get the atmosphere. You know, we want to be here and have a beer and sit there and talk the shit with you. <laughs> yeah, well, they oh, don't. That's, that's a terrible American accent. I, don't know, I can't do it. Fuck it. It's better than my fucking Dutch. We have fucking. We have all sorts of fucking accusations made of my, my Dutch accent. Yeah, well, they don't. In my road fucking bad it is do they when yeah when we flog on the tickets <laughs> so we should only sell we should only sell shit fucking tourist tickets on a tuesday night it, or a wednesday it was a night. fence up the middle if you're it gonna was come f- here you have to have the full shit tuesday night pissed down with rain forty <laughs> by experience you have to do eight hours of work before you get there just to get beat one nil in the last minute stand. stick them in the north stand problem solved yeah, I suppose it's distinguishing your neutrals from your your, your hardcore. That, that, uh, yeah, they um, speak like those people, do they? I, 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 I think it's flying yeah. dragon end after that Cardiff I, fan who decided to jump from there all them years ago. What was the upper tier? Was that was that entirely Bristol or was that divided no, that was, too? Yeah, that was fifty fifty. So it split down the middle with a tarpaulin, basically. Yeah, yeah. So basically, all right, all it probably wants, two, what, you probably had about three hundred mil in there, if that maybe. Yeah, no, there weren't many, but I mean that's that's a useful. Revenue, a fence down the middle. Whether it's just the upper deck or the upper, I don't know how they do this. So I might be talking bollocks. Well, they but... probably have to do upper tier because you have to offer disabled access down the bottom tier, don't you? So yes, you do. Yes, you do. Why not? So why not give Bristol the whole of the lower tier and do like they do at Nottingham Forest, and I've seen it at Liverpool and various. So we we can lob there's, there's a, there's a no, way back. bottles above the top down onto the. There's a Simpsons episode called Bombardment, Bombardment, <laughs> <laughs> where the, the teacher just slings the ball at the uh, bar. Bombardment, <laughs> Bombardment. <laughs> yeah, but you might learn Wait, something. Wait, in it's vapes, fucking you, everything. Knowledge of football is fucking appalling, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Put some kind of barrier above. The bottom tier, like they do at Nottingham Forest, drift. yeah, <laughs> and that is fucking problem solved, yeah. But then again, yeah, but then again, you two have got the collective fucking <laughs> knowledge, more knowledge of fucking the back of a poaching stamp, haven't you? <laughs> Bob oh, I think we've reached a conclusion. Fanatics, <laughs> fanatics, fanatics. fanatics. I haven't mentioned. Oh fucking hell. 
Um, what can we say to about fanatics? I, I I get regular emails of fanatics. They're a huge company. They've got all of the major American sports covered. They've, they've also they've, got they've, Formula One there as well. Formula One, um, world football on the, on the Real Madrid, Barcelona, international Miami or whatever. It, it, you name it. They're huge. And the problem that we've got at Millwall is that we're not huge. Uh, we're, we're a very small time little outfit. And we I don't know how many times the club have to learn the same lesson. But you do need a well-run um, local uh, club shop doing stuff that you, they've stocked there. I mean, I, I, I don't know the economics of it. Other shops do it, but there's no there's no route around it. And all the time we're trying to use outsourced companies, as, and this is a lesson of life generally. I don't know what you boys think, but anything outsourced tends to be crap. And um, at the moment, that's the service Millwall fans are getting off of fanatics. What, what annoys me? And this is, I'm going to make this as a wider point. So I'll make this a wider point. And the people that are listening, I'm not digging you out. Well, I am digging you out, but I'm also not digging you out from a place of hatred. It's a place of, I'm trying to educate you. (laughs) (laughs) Harry's doing the point here, Nick. It happens once a season that I make a transigent point and it's fine. And it's got no swearing in it. it, it, It's all fine. This is the soundbite for the season. Okay. There are people within Millwall Football Club as a support base who have run successful businesses. My oh, problem, big time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My problem yeah. is, is you never go, you got, you never go to these people. You have all our details. You know, the people that want to help the club. You, you never in everything that we do, that's from the club shop, the kiosk, the fucking academy system, the fucking lionesses, the fucking supporters group. That is from, that is from absolutely every aspect of the club they decide to pick people that have nothing to do with the club who do not care whether the club lives or dies if you are passionate about something you put hours upon hours into that thing for love not for money for love i'm not saying that people are going to do it for free and give their time away but there are people that are willing to help this football club people do it with the fucking food up the charitable side of mm-hmm. the club. people give hours of their time and build something only for the club to then try and get involved sometimes and fuck it up right this is the point there are people that have run shops, run market stalls, run businesses that could help that club shop. There is no reason to go to fucking fanatics. At, at, at people, you can go and read fucking reviews on businesses before you sign contracts, Millwall. This is a thing. You can't do this. The, the, the information is out there of them fucking Williams F1's team's apparel up. They've done the same with McLaren that I'm aware of. I, I know for a fact that fucking their... Um, Red Bull don't use them now, all of a sudden. So, right. so those are three okay. that I know of off the top of my head with a, a customary look at Twitter, which is like a 20-minute thing. This is mm. where, because of our size, people just go, oh, it'd be all right. You need to ask for help. And no one's going to fucking moan if you ask for help. But you I'll just... be honest, yeah? Yeah, but be f- yeah, but let's, yeah, let's have a bit of honesty here. Yeah? yeah? Will Coe are about to make 12,000 people redundant. Yeah? yeah. He, 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 what are you saying that in this economy that we cannot find a a shop manager and two or three, four assistants with retail experience that couldn't run that shop better than this organisation? The reason we've gone to them and outsourced them is because they paid us an onking great licensing fee, no doubt. And we just can't be bothered, can we? Yeah, well, that's oh. a bit off. That's yeah, well, easy. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You, right. Look at it from this point of view. And this was like... In my previous... Yeah, but it's only a club shop. That's just, uh, yeah, fuck it. In, yeah? My, in my previous career, I worked for fucking Marxies. I fucking worked at three different shops as a fucking manager, right? It is not hard, and I'll, I'll make this very, very simple for Millwall Football Club. It is really not hard to do a stock take twice a year to realise how much stock's getting nicked. It's really not hard, right? It's really not hard to fucking all the stock. It's not hard to arrange sales. It's not hard. But you've just got to pay someone an initial amount of money and make sure they're contracted like a fucking football player. If they're not working, after their time, they go, buy. Don't have a rolling contract where you've got to sack and fire people. Just say it's a performance-based fucking thing. And you sit down and you run the club shop like a business. Why is it so... It's related to a football club. 
if we go to fucking Wembley, right, you should not run out of fucking shirts in March, right? Because right. when we're going to sell no, no, 50,000 no. fucking shirts for fucking day trippers to go to fucking Wembley and you've sold them all in the sale at fucking Christmas, it makes no fucking sense. You have a look it's at the, the table thing. and decide. Same thing every, every year. We sort of, People want to... You know, not for me, but kids want um, replica kits, shirts, holidays. People want stuff to take away on holidays. There are, just... to do a free pa- the <laughs> amount of work. I say this every time. There are We are a working class club, right? Builders, electricians, tradesmen, tradeswomen, right? Fucking, we it's just people. need you to do fucking free colour T-shirts, little fucking T-shirts, with the fucking yellow lion on them, that's all you need to do in fucking three packs. A white one, a fucking black one, and a fucking blue one. Or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. 15 quid, and you'd fucking sell them all. It fucking yeah. ain't hard. They do them three pan t shirts in fucking Primark. We're not talking about <laughs> fucking Ralph Lauren quality. What the fuck are you doing? Product research. Stop putting the lionesses in fucking the wall kit as well. It's fucking degrading. It's bollocks. Stop doing that. <laughs> Have a look. Yeah, nobody cares about women's football, so let's not go there. Yeah? Uh, the BBC yeah. figures will have you. Let's, let's keep, have it, you keep it, keep it, keep it focused, boys. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But the point is that you have a look at Hoff last week. Yeah, there are people that want to spend Millwall fans that want to spend significant amounts of money in a club shop at the start of a season. Kitting the kids out in the latest yeah. kits. Yep. Might want to kit the missus out in the latest shirt for a little bit of how's your father. Yeah, well, after a decent... <laughs> Shut up, Harry. Yeah, well, I can see that face you're pulling, yeah? But we make it so impossible for our own fans to spend their hard-earned money in our club. Yeah, we have American tourists over, and we made the point last season. They are ripe for taking two hundred sheets off. Yeah, aren't they? The, the we, Germans, the Dutch. Instead, they go to the badge man next to the fucking church and buy an half and half skirt off. Exactly. Yeah. We make it so difficult to mitigate our losses. By actually making money. It's because there are certain people in this club, high up, that don't give a fuck about Millwall Football Club. The only thing they want to do is they want to pick up their exorbitant wages at the end of the month, yeah? And then they repeat. They go on to the next month. They want to pick their wages up, yeah? It is absolutely criminal the way that this football club is run and has been run for a number of years, yeah? We're no longer competing in League One. It'd be embarrass- yeah, it would be embarrassing enough in League One. We're now an established championship club looking towards the Premier League. If we got into the Premier League, it would be fucking embarrassing. The club shop would have been empty, as the sky cameras rolled by for first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would have been fucking brilliant, wouldn't it? You'd imagine that. Fuck me. Exactly. Uh, people want to spend their money, yeah? Let's, you know, let's outsourcing. Let's get people in, pay them a decent wage, that know what they're doing in each department. I also point out, I know I don't like gambling and I take the piss out of gambling all the time and gambling in sports and whatever and people will say it's bad. But you can't have a better than then. But you could easily set somebody up, a local bookmaker who can take it and you can take 10% of their fucking profits up in the away end and take fucking... Because yeah, they ain't going to be able to... They used to have that. The old, the old den, they used to have a, a, be, a, a booth um, up at the back of the yeah, halfway line for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they did it in the east... Yeah, they did it in the east lower... Uh, Years ago, the, the yeah, they did, they did. I remember actually. Now you say that, Neil. Yeah, that yeah, I'm presuming. Yeah. I'm presuming the fucking security aspect of it may be a problem. But maybe just, a problem. Uh, just well, the cashless just nowadays, Harry. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's a cashless stadium. Fucking do that with the game. Just take ten percent of the away team's profits off them. It's fucking fine. Bookies. It's it's ready made. 
to be fair, Lurch has done every fucking thing else at the club, hasn't he? <laughs> fucking security, <laughs> kit man, fitness cook, coach. Cook, bottle but, washer as well, hasn't he? Yeah but, apart from, yeah, but apart from actually running the club shop, yeah, but he's got a pizza. Don't, don't give him fucking ideas. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> I've 64 minutes now, boys. I think we've probably explored the uh, the, the, the full gamut of Millwall pain and uh, the you know the ex- excruciation. That's not a word, is it? Um, I want to say thank you to Harry for joining me on a Sunday morning. You've got a, a busy schedule ahead of you today, H. Yes, I'm going on the piss. <laughs> and thank you to Neil Fissler for joining me as well. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate yeah, it. Well, I'm just going to cook Sunday lunch and get thoroughly depressed watching the football. <laughs> <laughs> a big thank you to you two, dear listeners, for joining um, today's show. Um, I'm going to do a, a separate thing later. I'm going to, all I'm doing is editing today. But anyway, there we are. I'll do a separate show with the remaining of the voicemails. No, I'm going to see what the uh, the internet situation is like next week. I might need a bit of a break. I might put a show out next week. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see whether the internet has reached North. Cheer Denver. up. It's only Norwich next, lads. We haven't won there since fucking... The... <laughs> We haven't yeah, won there. Have we won there since Ireland was no longer united? We <laughs> the last time we fucking won there. I haven't actually won there in my lifetime. I think, yeah, but I think the last time we won there was about nine months before I was born. <laughs> Set us up nicely for any future editions of the show. I'm going to call it quits. Big thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you, listeners. Until the next edition of uh, Act on the Wall, whenever that may be. Thanks for listening. Arriva Dirty Millwall. Bye for now. Achtung, Millwall. No